Tuesday plus sports and plus TV Africa. So many things to discuss. I think we're going to be testing Mukayo's um, law instinct. He's always believing he has this legal perspective to everything. So let's test it today and see if he can make it happen. Now, the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, has been ordered to pay former coach Genot Roar just under $380,000 in compensation after ending his contract early. Nigeria's longest serving manager, having taken charge in August 2016, now Raw lost his job as Super Eagles coach in December, just four weeks before the delayed 2021 African Cup of Nations kicked off in Cameroon. The NFF had agreed to pay Raw's salary until the end of his contract, which expires in December 2022. But the Franco German went to football's world governing body, FIFA, to demand an additional sum for breach of contract without just cause. Raw, who is 68, had sought a total of $1 million, but has been granted $377,879 after a FIFA tribunal decided his claim was partially accepted in so far as it is admissible. Let's do the rest. Gennot Raw says he was sacked. Mm -hmm. I don't know if in the contract, in the clause, he says you can be sacked. Mm -hmm. If he says we won't sack you, unless you live on your own, it's a different ballgame. Mm -hmm. But everybody who gets a job today must know there will be a sack day or a resignation day. Mm -hmm. What starts must end. Mm -hmm. Um, in this case, I mean, we are, like we've said in the past, we are not privy to the um, nature of the contract, what um, clauses exist within it. And usually both parties want to protect their respective interests in the event that they both must part, part ways. But in this instance, obviously there must have been an agreement in place, some clause in place that the NFF agreed to that stated that he would get paid a certain amount till the end of his contract and if there was a, a breach or an ending, a cessation of that contract earlier than expected, there would be criteria by which that would be acceptable without him getting paid anything. And if those criteria weren't met, then he would have just cause to bring an action against the NFF. We've seen recently, I think the former coach of Cagliari was sacked, but within his contract he had placed a clause that the club agreed to that said if he got sacked and the club wasn't in the relegation zone, then he, his contract was automatically renewed for two more years. If Amadou Penic wasn't as, pardon me, arrogant mm -hmm. as he was, mm -hmm. I think everywhere in the world, um, a coach has been, at least the press, if not the public, mm -hmm. at least the press should have an idea what the contract stipulates. Mm. No media house, I'm mm. boastfully saying that today, can boastfully tell the world that they have seen General Ross' contract. Well, at the same time, we cannot even say that the contract follows standard practices. Exactly. The fact that we haven't seen it means that no legal expert can sit on this panel and tell us exactly what is wrong with that contract and why Gennot Raw is able to get away with this. All we can assume is that there is a clause in there that protects his interest and ensures that he gets paid. And uh, FIFA wouldn't have ruled in this manner if they didn't think there was a case in the first place. Okay. Now, Manchester City have reportedly agreed a deal for Herlin Haaland with Borussia Dortmund and are set to announce the move later this week. Now, Mukail, yeah. On your news package last night, you had this story. Yes. But you didn't have... Um, we had heard that, but there yeah. wasn't much yeah, enough yeah, on track. There was no... Uh, now, um, a few months ago, Pep Guardiola was asked how he would think he would fare with Erling Haaland. Even Ralph Ragnick spoke excitedly about mm. Haaland. Mm. That period is an archival video. Mm. That period they were hoping that Haaland will come to any of these clubs. Mm. But right now, obviously, he's going to Manchester City. Yes. Let's hear what they said those months ago and then we'll come back, okay? Okay, now, um, he's speaking glowingly, mm. but this is an archival material. Mm. So, but now he's, he's a done deal already. But he spoke about Haaland being very young, mm. tall, mm. strong, and can use both legs. Every team wants that kind of player as an asset, really. Mm, yes. Um, I fear for what the Premier League is going to look like next season. And 
because of this deal, in order to get it over the line, we've even heard reports that uh, Pep is willing to agree to a two-year extension to his current contract, which would leave him and Klopp leaving the club at about the same time. Um, the fact is, actually blame Tottenham for this in situation. Because if uh, Man City had managed to get Harry Kane last summer, they wouldn't have had the need to go for Haaland, Haaland this season. Um, I always knew that Haaland was never going to choose Manchester United, not with the uh, rivalry and issues that existed between his father and uh, Roy Keane. True that. Um, these players, it, it, for us as entertainment, for them, it's their lives. These um, family they feuds They get run emotional deep. once in a while. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Man City was, I think... The reason, a major reason why he will be going to Man City is because of his father's um, connection to the club. Um, Pep Guardiola is obviously an attractive um, asset to have at the club to bring in the very best players. And um, obviously Man City can afford the kind of wages that we assume he's going to be demanding high wages, enough so that even Real Madrid have pulled out of the race. So. This seems like a done deal, unless something significant like um, the uh, new t owners of uh, Chelsea deciding or maybe even Newcastle throwing so much money into the mix that, you know, it sways. Let's, fear, let, let, let's ask ourselves this question. That's the question everybody's asking now. You have to fear the English Premier League at this point mm. because um, Manchester City with a recruit like Erling Haaland will be almost unstoppable. Almost. Now, Liverpool have not... I'm sure they have something in their bag. They mm -hmm. haven't put out yet. Um, you've got um, Manchester United, who are coming with a new manager, who's coming with new ideas. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'll buy players. The Glazers have said, tell us how much you want. We'll give you a blank check. Mm -hmm. Buy whatever you want to buy. Mm -hmm. So, um, how tough do you see the English Premier League next season? It's... We're seeing The only thing we're hearing about Chelsea is... Victor Osime. Mm. But of course, we know they are putting that in public glare for us. Mm. There's something behind the scene they are probably doing. There's to. going to be a lot to revel and uh, relish in the English Premier League next season. I am very much looking forward to the battle between Van Dijk and uh, Haaland. When the defender, when a big defender like uh, Van Dijk goes up against a big striker like Haaland, it's going to be an impressive, impressive matchup. Chelsea Football Club, we suspect, are going to make a, a couple major we deals. We hear the whole back line just might go. Mm, yes. Mm, a large least, amount of them. At least uh, 6 Rodiger, Rodiger is yes, going. Yes, yes. Um, a whole large amount of the back line are going. And we're hearing that uh, Mason Mount, uh, Reese James are going to be in for bumper uh, new contracts. Yeah. Um, Rhys James has been on the shopping list for Real Madrid recently, so Chelsea desperately want to keep him. Um, everything you said about Manchester United is going to be interesting to watch because at least five or six players are expected Chile. to come uh, in. I've gone already. Expected to come it's in. Coming. And three players are already leaving on free, con on free uh, contracts. The maybe three, maybe four more players are going to be sold. Um, Possibly the entire back line might get reshuffled. Uh, Varane just arrived last summer, so he's likely to stay. Maguire may stay, may go, but even if he stays... Where, where is he staying? If he stays, there's a good chance he's going to warm the bench a bunch of games. Um, yeah, so the Premier League... The money in the Premier League has made it so important possible for almost any other league to compete with the impressive number of talents that are flocking in. So next season, this summer, from this summer, we're going to see a lot of major moves. We're hearing that even uh, Frankie de Jong is perhaps going to leave Barcelona. Barcelona ready to cash in. A lot of players are going to, a lot of big name players are going to end up in the Premier League. And even some not so well known gems the likes of players that might end up like the next uh, Luis Suarez, the next uh, Coutinho when he was at Liverpool, players that we haven't heard enough of, but might turn out to be um, astute purchases like Luis Diaz for Liverpool. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has responded to comments made by Pep Guardiola after Manchester City's 5-0 win over Newcastle on Sunday. Now, the City manager denied that Nobody in England wants uh, to see his side win the Premier League this season and that everybody is supporting Liverpool. 
Now ahead of the Reds' next match against Aston Villa, again Klopp said so the manager sometimes gets massively influenced by the game. Now, Pep Guardiola, what do we call this frustration? Mm. What, do we, what does he mean by that? He says that um, despite all, he feels the whole of England, the fans in England, don't want Man City to win the league. They actually want Liverpool you to know, win the league. I can understand where Pep is coming from because when it was Chelsea's turn, nobody wanted Chelsea to win. True that. The notion that these clubs are buying success, buying trophies, they've gone out and bought the very best players, they've gotten the very best uh, uh, director of football, former Barcelona director of football, Tiki, um, I, I forget his last name. Tiki something, Be yeah. Begastan. Yeah, they've gone out and gotten the very best coach in the world and now every season they spend upwards of 60 million uh, the uh, su summer they just went by they bought a hundred million player and he is still not played 70 percent of the games this season so a lot of people a lot of fans do not want to see that and Liverpool seem more like a, a homegrown success story they buy cheap and come and, and develop and become stronger and they play a form of football that is still very much attractive still very competitive and their coach is very likable um pep guardiola a lot of times with all of his um all of his tactical genius he seems to overthink a lot of inst uh, instances a lot of in uh, times he goes into games that a lot of people expect yeah. him to win and he doesn't so yes i can understand where he's coming from so let's hear what Klopp has to say he's been very modest today he says he doesn't believe that the english fans want him to win are the english fans only lean towards who is doing well really again Klopp being very modest there okay now, RB Leipzig are up to fourth place in the Bundesliga following a 4 0 win over Augsburg. Christopher Nkunku was in scintillating form once again, bagging a brace in between strikes from Anthony Silva and Emil Foxberg to secure a comfortable win for RB Leipzig, which means all things being equal, RB Leipzig should be in the Champions League next season. Next season. We'll take that. When we come back, we'll round off and we'll give you our visuals for the end of the program. And everybody wants to buy Christian and Kunku. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mukayo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajasa AJ. Thank you very much, Shay Shai. Thank you very much, Damilola. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isaac. I call him Zico. He was behind the cameras. You don't see him, but he makes you see us. Thank you very much, D1 in the powerhouse, Dio. Thank you. It's been a fantastic day. Just the same time tomorrow, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. We we'll leave you with Stan Warinka, who beats Ryder Opelka for his first line level win since February of 2021. He hasn't won since 2021 in February.